Eight minutes. We good? We good? Oh, some new people in back. Hey, thanks for coming. I'm going to use my big booming voice. Is that all right? You can hear me okay? I used to teach college, so I'm, I'm treating you like the kids, right? Um, I'm Matt Schultz. I'm a new member of the pharmacy here. I'm an old guy. And I want to read this little prose I wrote. It's not much. It seems like two pages, but it's not much. I'm going to read this prose because to me, this is an opportunity more than to just talk about, say, myself, to talk about this institution and greater aspects of community. So here we go. Okay, I would uh, have memorized this, but if my memory was that good, I'd be in Hollywood doing movies, so I have to read it. My brain doesn't work that way. It is nice to be speaking to you from the very same institution that banned me from membership when it started 12 years ago. <laughs> what a change times have made. Jack Kerouac wrote, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They are not fond of rules. They do not respect status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify them or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things, they push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see them as the geniuses. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. That quote separates the artists from everyone else. And I don't agree with it. I agree with the concept of it, but not the separation. I, like a famous artist, Joseph Boys, my, like my most admired sculptor, feels that everyone is an artist. He expressed, and I agree with him, every human being is endowed with creativity an inborn faculty to bring forth new things, forms, and events. But this, however, lies dormant with most people. And the social task of professional artists, boys and I both think, is to liberate the repressed creative potential. Artificial intelligence will do this. It will level the playing field. It will empower the frail and the timid, the handicapped and the wounded. But most importantly, it will obliterate the gates and their keepers. It will render their keys worthless and they will fall with huge egos deflated as everyone walks past them oblivious to their once was status. AI will liberate all people to become creators, for that is human nature. Creativity is the foundation of ex human experience. Many call their God great creator. It is why we are here, and we are not here to work mindless jobs, to incarcerate people in stone cells, or to commit violence. So you ask, what's the problem? Where does it lie? Where's the weak link? What is the destroyer of art? I'm here to tell you, it's not AI. It is quite literally you and me and the human race. We are the problem. You see, art is powerful. Being a creator is power. It is powerful. Artists are powerful people. Personally, I've been literally ostracized for my art. I remember once, while in grad school, a professor literally said after a critique, they will kill you for the art you make. To me, that was the point of being an artist. Doing political art in the era of Trump's fascism may just get you killed. This is why we need to unite. 
We can no longer afford silly, trite infighting. We cannot afford to work from a point of jealousy or from ego. This microcosm is a larger macrocosm of America. We must learn that we are all human beings and we're all the same. We are not, though, the billionaires and we never will be. We are not the power elite and we never will be. And we are not the narcissistic elite controlling us and we never will be. What we are is the common man working together with creativity. And we can be very powerful. But we still create separations from each other and it must stop. From committee boards manipulating control behind the scenes to people creating gates and excluding others from expressing themselves, all the while decrying community and solidarity. We must stop these exclusions and work together. Because if we do not unite as at least artists and as a larger art community and as a city of Springfield and finally the people and citizens of this country, we will all wither in isolation in the end times. Thank you for allowing me that soapbox. I thought I would take the opportunity to, to go out there. Again, my name is Matt Schultz. I'm a multimedia artist. I was just made a member for the last show here. I do um, everything. I went to graduate school for sculpture predominantly, but when I was offered the free ride to uh, Southern, I said, uh, I said, can I just do anything I want? And he's like, please. And they have a three year program. So I built an exhibition of the division. This is an album. I do music as well. This is the album that supports it. I brought free ones for every once one. You can have it. Um, I also have this book that I wrote and published during COVID about traveling the world and working with indigenous peoples around the globe. I lived in Peru, Guatemala, worked with the Mayans. So again, I have this big history and I'm back here now in Springfield and it's, um, I'm excited to be part of this community. And again, like I said, to, to be accepted finally to the pharmacy is a big deal for me. And there's a lot of great stuff going on. We've got really great things happening in this town. So I'm very excited. I don't have a lot of my bigger sculptural work here. Um, I do two factions here. This is ceramic. These are goddesses and gods that I create that want to be reborn. They're forgotten gods. And so I, I build them. And then you get to take them home and give them your, a name and, and whatever and power you want with them. And they have these little openings on the back so you can put your mantra or prayer or whatever you want in there. I started that when I was in Guatemala and then in Costa Rica. When I got back to the States and AI started, I started doing that because it's economically feasible. One of the biggest problems we have as producers, I went to film school, my one bachelor's is in film. The problem is, is making films. Like you couldn't, in the 80s, when I went to college, it, our senior thesis was $10,000. Do the math for that. Nowadays, that's a lot of money to spend on your senior thesis. What AI is doing now is liberating me and many other people to make artwork like this, which is the opposite of the hand-built dirt that I'm firing in a kiln, but to make works like this and then relatively cost me no money, right? So I, I was just talking with somebody tonight, uh, this piece, I could very well sculpt everything in here, I could bring in the model, I could make this entire thing. The cost assessment, because I'm a professional artist, I've done this for a while, I know it would be cost like thousand dollars, and she's gonna bail the day she has to show up for the photo shoot because of something happened. You see what I mean? So I've spent all this money, I gotta go find another model, maybe she doesn't want it, maybe that's not the look I want. Right? <coughs> what AI is allowing to happen is to create exactly what you want and then produce it out. The quality of AI is now infinite. There's no printer that is big enough of a format to print a, an image large enough to hang on the wall. So I can do 100 inches at 300 dpi. This is unbelievable. We're in new territory. Anybody with low skills, they don't know, I don't know, I don't know what I do. I, I feel terrible, I want to paint, right? But I don't know how to put the pigment on the paint, on the, on the canvas. I want to do photography, but I don't know how to shoot a camera. This will totally liberate that person. It's not easy, and it takes a lot of work. One of these images takes me considerably more time than it does to make this piece. And that's including both the bisque firing and the glaze firing. So again, for people to say, oh, this is, you know, it's not, it's not too easy. Uh, I think Jeff, sorry, I was talking, so if you're condemning it, you have no idea what it takes to do it, right? 
Again, it would be like if the camera was invented and somebody said, hey, uh, that's real lazy and you're not an artist. You're just pointing that box at that landscape, you know? So again, this AI stuff is, is changing the dynamics completely. Absolutely, and now we're getting into video and it's just going that much further. So again, that's basically the gist of what I do here. I like the uh, extremes between the digital uh, AI created, generated, and then the handmade sculpture work. Anybody have any, yes? Yes. Like, what kind of apps do you use? Specifically, the AI app I use is called Mid Journey, and it's a text-driven, image-driven device, right? So it's a program. I mean, AI is a, a bit far-fetched in the sense that everybody wants to pretend it's literally thinking. It's not. It has algorithms. It's a program somebody wrote, yeah. right? And it's possibly learning at the same time. But what you're doing is, is you're, you're, you know, I'm utilizing my art history background, right, like from school. So I'm saying, like, I want to refer to this painter, this photographer, this thing, I want to have it. Like, for instance, this piece maybe have 60 to 100 words prompting it, you know? And then there's arguments of whether that many words actually work, right? So there's all sorts of weirdness. But I'll say, like, I want it shot with a Canon 7D with the f-stop wide open and the depth of field this big. I want it to be in black and white. This, you know, and I'm describing the scene, then I'm pulling pictures from other things and saying refer to that, and you're cycling it through. And it will come up with some and you say, no, 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 go this direction, and maybe you get closer, you take that one and then refer everything to that image. So it takes a long time. My, my, I've been doing it for one year now, and I'm well over 30,000 image generated cycles. So like something like this, you know, this is probably four hours plus to get to where I want. Then I'm upsampling it so that it's crystal clear and then having it digitally printed. But, you know. Yeah, so then, like, you can crop some things and put them down first, maybe, and then lay something on top of it? Exactly. It's total composite photography, if you wish. Again, you're using seed images and text to gear it in a direction. So I've done composites where I'll take a photo, actually take a photo of something, and then overlay things I want on top of it, and then take it into the program and say, now do what you do. And it's usually never accurate, and so you're like, okay, do it again. You know, you have to keep cycling these generations. It takes a lot of work. It actually takes a lot of work. Now, with that said, sometimes you can't just type in a sentence that gets something amazing. So, you know, there is a thing. Are you finished? Yeah, go, uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you, I was curious, actually, the ball also. Your, those, could you tell us? About the heads? Yeah, I, I'm curious as to how, you know, how you make it. If, I, look at it together, what do you use? You know? Okay, this is a mid-fire ceramics, right? And I use a red iron oxide as the glaze. And so, um, when I, I studied with the Mayan elders on Lake Atitlan for a couple years, and we had this whole thing that like their, their gods were being forgotten, right? So all these gods are being forgotten. And I like this idea of making this kind of a new set of gods and goddesses, right? That were forgotten in the past and now they're being brought back to life. What I did with this one, or all of them, because there's 40 now and I think you're an owner of one, yeah. is, is uh, I, I actually Googled a pretty woman sculpture and I found the face. And then I pulled a mold of that, right? And then I pulled a mold of a sculpture of a pretty woman face. And I, it, was, it was an African woman, and I like that because we're all from women, and that was Africa's the, the like seat of humanity, so I wanted it to be that. And then I can augment, so I do a press mold of her face, and I can change her. I can make her into a man, I can make her into anything, right? Nature, nurture, there's a whole thing about this, right? Like, I'm manipulating the birth process into a different form. And then the headdresses are all intuitive, or I'm sorry, impromptu on the spot. So I'll just lay out, roll out the clay, cut some shapes, and start laying them all out. Is that clay? This is ceramics, yes. It's, it's fired, mid-fired clay. The same as these, this dishware. You know, this is another one of our artists here. It's the same, it's the same material as this. I just patina them differently. You have a big uh, kill. 
No, I'm a member of SAA, and they have a great ceramic studio at, at, at SAA. Has a fantastic ceramic studio. I wish it was twice the size, three times the size. It's, it's great. Did you have a question? Yes. Well, it's a digital file, so it, yeah, it, it's a digital file, so it's no different than if I took a photograph, and you know, because I take them into Photoshop and I clean them up in Photoshop, and then I put them in another program that upsamples them cleanly. So I have a large digital file. What's that? Tone it down. Dumb it down. Um, it's a digital file, and I send it to or I take it. This is the Springfield printer on Fifth Street. I forgot their name. They're great. They do a great job. See, the other thing about this is this, is this is technically $70. Like, my, so you want to talk about level of playing field. You know, like there's, you know, I, I, I have painted, uh, you know, I, I've painted oil paintings. Of, I've spent the thousand hours sitting there, you know, every night I get home from work and then all day Saturday, all Sunday, watching movies, painting. God, oh, it's not right. A little more shadow. And I, I think it sucks. I think it's tedious and boring. And if you love it, I think that's great. Do you see what I mean? Like, go for it. Do whatever you want, right? But I don't like it. I like to get something done, get it printed, and go look at it. You know? Yes. Um, so we're saying that you're looking at this, and that looks like a lot of hours in that thing. The way you were describing how you created these, you know, like put a big planet out here, five little ones behind. Let it reflect in a pool. Put some uh, red rock all around. Make it look like it's going. I mean, you're punching all that in and shifting. Depending. And Dep it, de it depends on it depends on the work. Like they say, you know, I was considered like a slot machine, right? Like it gives you the three cherries. They actually designed the app to actually do that, which is sidebar the same as Facebook. When you log into Facebook, there's an actual algorithmic pause before you get the three red dots. The three red dots are your pull on the slot machine. You're literally waiting, do I get three cherries? Oh, I got them, dopamine dump, right? This program is exactly like that. You type in your stuff, you do the thing, and you hit it, and it's like, like it actually has like kind of this spinning wheel, like it's dissolving into the photograph. And so you're like, oh, I don't like any of those, do it again. You know, and then you're like, okay, one is good, re-augmented, add this image to it, here's some more text, force it that way. Reflect you know? this, shade that. Well, but that, that may be even too far in that sense that the detail, you could do that if you wish. That's more done in Photoshop and post would be is to go change the lighting, the, the tone and stuff like that. You know, this, some of these are, like it could be two sentences with a single prompt image, you pull it, man, they're great. So it's, it, it's really, it sounds like it's a heck of a lot of work that is really expensive. I, I mean, it does. It, it depends. Again, it's, it's, it's both it spectrums. Is. It's both spectrums. It can be very quick, and you can win the lottery, like the roulette, you know, whatever. You got three cherries. Oh, I won. That's perfect. Let's move to the next body of work. I mean, I'm sitting on probably literally 20 to 30 bodies of work, each one having 50 different presentable images within that body. I mean, you, you can't do that as a painter. There's no way. I mean, Egon Schiele did, what, like, 80,000 or something, he's 27. I mean, you know, there's like a drawing, you know, he did, he did like five a day, you know, another one. You, know, you can't possibly paint paintings that quickly and have a catalog that large. It's, it's liberating, I think. Yes? Uh, how many programs are out there that do this? Only a few right now? To my knowledge, there's a few. And again, I think the thing is, is what's happening too is there's Facebook groups and people are going in and they'll share prompts. So you're just like, how'd you get that image? And they'll just, some people will be like, hey, here it is. Other people will be like, you're not getting that. You know, because they're selling it. They're selling it. It's their magic spell. There's something interesting about the entire thing that language is magic, right? Like a hocus pocus spell, right? And you're typing language in and then getting back these spectacular images. And some people, you ask them, like, what's your spell? And they're like, I'm not giving it to you. You know, they're keeping it. And other people are like, there's entire sites where it's completely open. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yes? So I have some mundane questions about your process. Sure. Um, you know, what kind of day do you use? Any kind? This is my Sunday morning cappuccino uh, French press. Okay. Well, especially about that um, image, um, how did you 
decide on the size of the cupcake. Of the uh, size of the canvas? Of the cupcake, she's holding. Oh, of the cupcakes? <laughs> I love it. I, I think that would be one of the more generalized, like it's, it's kind of coming up with it itself, you know? And maybe it would be too big and I think it's funny, let's go with it. Or I will say like, I gotta take a photo, go to Photoshop, scale it back, say reference this one, don't deviate too much. Okay, so but when you were doing that particular one, uh -huh. do you recall what your thought process was? Well, this, is, this stems from, there was some more over here, there's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going through like five artists and you're, and so basically like a, you know, like a painter in, in, in graduate school, they're like, what's your influence? They're like, oh, I like this guy, I like that guy, you know, that's what brought me to art, you know, and like, I, and so that's their stimulus is they were really probably impressed by somebody and wanted to make art as well. So I'm using different modes of like different artists and saying like, make this painting look like that person did it. You know what I mean? So it does do, the AI does know all the images on the internet. Like it's, so it's like, I know who you're talking about, okay. And you'll be shocked at how, so like again, if you took somebody like a great sculptor, Anselm Kiefer, who does large installative work, right? And you're like, what if Anselm Kiefer made a painting, you know, cause he does like these fields too that are just 60 by 20 feet, right? It looks like a plowed field. Well, what if he actually sat down and made the cupcake girl? You know, Victorian style, this era. So you start getting this like really fun hodgepodge of stuff. You know, and again, that's what I think is really fun about it. The creative process is this for me about like, let's make something new and then what's the effect of that to some degree, you know? Yes? Uh, Matt, I have one of yours and the woman in it has six fingers. How, how did it get six fingers? It was a total flaw. Mid Journey was very flawed, so it's on version six now. Back then, it was version four, and it couldn't understand fingers. When so it would do like you'd have like you'd say like do a woman, and, and like eighty percent of them they would have five fingers each, and then a lot of them they'd have six. And I thought that was funny because, and that's a Klimt referenced piece, right? Is that if you look at Klimt. The way he does the hands looks like there's too many fingers anyway. So I was like, well, I'll just leave it. Like it was, it was like a happy accident. The computer probably looked at it and said, I don't understand how many fingers are on this painting. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> to leave it, yeah. Yes. Just somebody who's just dabbled with a purely amateur, screwing around basis of. So are you, so you actually able to revise the same image over and over again, not just uh, revise the prompt for a new image. That's yeah, yeah, you can use the same prompt and it'll give you like four images, right? And then you can say like, uh, upsample these four images, so it'll be like make them bigger. But now it has it where it's like upsample and deviate slightly, upsample and deviate radically. Then you can also go, I just hate it all, start over. Or you can say, just take that one image and do a great read. There's like all these variables in there. Well, I just, I've often noticed like things of like, this is a great image, but I'd like to like, just change this one thing, but I don't want to have to start the whole thing over. Or is that when you use Photoshop? Well, that's when you use Photoshop. See, like in the Facebook groups, people will complain about this. They want to get something exact, right? And it's like, well, I'm, I, I'm a photographer. I've done, I've taught Photoshop in colleges for 13 years. So my thing is like, just go in there and Photoshop, then take the thing you want. And then you can take that image and reapply it. Yeah. And then you can tell how far, you can tell the AI, like, I don't want you to deviate at all from the original image, like 1%. It's like the chaos factor. There's different ways of see, telling it not to deviate. Yes. So just um, on these two pictures of women, were are they actual images of the model that came down somehow, or do you put those in and say work with these? I'm just curious. No, they 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 were completely started as text prompts. Uh -huh. This is based on Venus. I was for the this is our next show, which is sky, water, clay, and stone. stone. And so I was using I was doing Venus, the birth of like she you know she's in the shell. Right. And, and Mid Journey was, I, I tapped into something. And, so I was just doing it, and then it got into underwater and all that, you know, Ophelia. I was like, okay, let's try that. So then it's taking, like, I'm trying, it's trying to reference all those things. And again, you're just playing with these ideas and then seeing what it comes up with and then manipulating that. So, how close to, I mean, you start out, you start out with an image that in your head that you want. 
I mean, did you think, you know, and that's kind of what I was thinking of when I started with, yeah. you just grab the tiger by the tail. And it's, about, it's both. Yeah. Like this one is, these, this and the cake girls that are around the wall over there, you can see what I'm done. That, that is exactly what I wanted. Like, that, I was like, I need these. I was actually in Vegas working, doing custom art for a, a dessert bar that was opening up, and they wanted women and cakes. That was the two things. It was a, uh, the, the baker was a, a woman. And so I was doing all this cake. I mean, I bet you have a thousand images of the, the cake girls. And it is everything from this kind of Victorian to this to that style. Any other questions? I understand this correctly. Is it what you're really doing is building layers that fit together in the image that you want? Is that, is that could be a way of looking. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of how yeah. it works. Yeah. Do you have one? Um, yes, I assume you can, instead of uh, searching for an image like, fill in the blank, can you upload your own? Yes, that's, that's, yes, that's what I mean. Yes, I, you go take your own photo and then put it in there and then say, you know, either deviate radically or don't deviate radically. You could be the cupcake girl. You could be the cupcake girl. Or not. <laughs> yes. I am, I, again, it depends, because when I got here, too, and, and this is one of the things about separation, there's literally places that won't allow AI art. And you're like, again, in my opinion, that's very much like when the advent of the camera happened, and people are like, we don't want that photography in this show, we're painters, you know? And, and it's just technology, and it's being used. So we had it where uh, if I didn't augment it in Photoshop too greatly, we were calling it AI-assisted art, digital prints. Some of these are radically augmented in Photoshop, they're composites, and so then I'm going to call it digital art. And even if it's on the canvas, because these are on, you know, it's canvas print on the wood frame, like a painting. I think if you paint it over, it would be mixed media at that point. You know, that's what, that's what you probably de define it as in the academia. Well, here's the thing, see, I can sculpt this. <laughs> Right? And I can find that model, and again, it, it, like I did a cost assessment, I'm like, yeah, I'll just do this as a sculpture. How cool would that be is to go from this as a stimulus, and let's build this thing. And then I'm like, it's $1,000 easily. And again, i got to find a model. i got to, you know, got to get the light rig. It, it just becomes, you know, it would take me weeks to build it. You know, well, it's just, and so it, to me, it's just easier to do it in AI that, with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, I'm not with the yard. I'm just defending it because so many people are critical of it. Like, if the Illinois Times are in a competition, it wouldn't allow AR to submit it because last year somebody submitted a piece and it got accepted. And so that was more about the person being a liar than it was about using AI art. Because they actually said they spent hours painting it. Yeah, see, that's, that's just, you're just a liar at that point. Yeah, one more. Yeah, I mean, but that, that's the whole thing about like being an artist. Like if you have the history and the background, I can call on these styles, right? And I say, oh, I want to have this style and this photographer and do that. But the other thing is, is for you to just sit down and say, I want to see the cake girl. She's got a big cupcake on her head, you know, like pull the thing and see what it gives you. You know, I, I think that's what's so liberating about it for everybody is just that anybody with just sitting down again, my cappuccino on Sunday morning and playing, you know, pulling the lever for a few hours. You, you're going to get something. And it's totally addictive, too, in the sense that you could just be like, what if I try this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then a rookie could take Cupcake Girl and, and you could say, well, do it in the style of so and so. Well, here's the thing that so we've socialized. It socializes art, which is right up my alley. Again, about us being a collective instead of an individualistic institution, is that you can literally come up here and take a photo of this, go home and put it in mid journey and say, make a cupcake girl looks just like this. And then you could turn around and sell it. There's no, we, we've obliterated 
and socialize the capitalistic monetary components of 2D art at this moment, and believe me, they're on 3D, there's computer robots now cutting, you know, and there's video. The video is unbelievable. I would say in five years, you could put those goggles on and say, I would like to be in a James Bond movie, but I want it to be in the Wild West, and I'm wearing a space outfit, and you just like, it'll be a movie game, PS5 game. Stop you're giving Marco ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Marco outfit. Didn't we see an AI movie on Netflix or someplace? Pardon? AI movie. Oh. Well, what time are we at? It's time. It's time? Yeah. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.